Put the red light on. That's <laughs> so, Chris, what have been some highlights this year for Pluto? Um, Pluto that has has really excited me. It's allowed me a lot of freedom to um, experiment, I guess, and to uh, dabble in some uh, exciting new directions in science. But the, mo the most exciting thing for me and the biggest highlight has been the excitement in the students and their, their love of science as a result of being in the Pluto project. Um, because we've allowed students to have a lot more input into what they study and how they go about that. Mm. And the group work has meant that kids have come away loving science. And uh, I know that was one of our main main goals, to, mm. raise, um, to raise achievement through a, a raised engagement. Mm. And certainly the engagement has been there. The kids absolutely love, mm. love the, um, the relevance and the, the, team, the teamwork aspect of the work we've done this year. Um, it's being part of the Pluto project as an official, you know, thing that has had buy-in from the principal and it's meant that I've allowed, been allowed a lot more flexibility than I would have previously been allowed. And it's, uh, the timing of it has worked in really well with our buy-in to the, to the Te Kataitanga project here, but also the, um, the implementation of the revised curriculum. So mm. it's been really good. Mm. The, the three sort of dovetail in beautifully. Mm. And it's uh, it's allowed us to, as a department, look at why we do things the way we do them, and to see if there is a possibility of having more flexibility for teachers in the future. Um, and uh, yeah, the positive ripples will carry on for quite some time, I think, throughout mm. the school. It's been good for me to have to, to be an HOD being involved because it's allowed me to um, to then. It's, 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 it's carried more weight, I guess, from a departmental mm. point of view, because mm. the others have had to sit up and take notice. It's not just some way out teacher who's doing that, and we can forget about them. This is actually their leader. <laughs> you know, that sounds a bit, um, yeah. But anyway, that you know, they can't ignore it really, mm. and um, they're going to have to start to take some of the things on board themselves. Mm. Yeah, so um, from a departmental point of view, great to have that that freedom uh, to do something different and to to, I guess, be the, the flag bearer for the rest of the department. Uh, but from a personal point of view, as a teacher, just seeing the kids' excitement and their delight in coming to science, the fact that they don't wag my classes, although they might wag some other classes, um, coming in at lunchtime to finish or work on projects is something that hasn't really happened much in the past. So, yeah, the delight in the kids and their enthusiasm for science is what's really been exciting. Great. What about the challenges of, of having something alternative, you know, something experimental in a, you know, in a school like this. What, what, what tell me about that. Initially there was a lot of negative um, vibes, I guess, from the other teachers. They were scared that my class would, would, um, would put pressure on the other classes having to do fun stuff as well. They thought, well, if you do that, then we're all going to have to do it, or we'll we will all look worse because you look better and there's, there's a lot of that in, in the school but also um, <coughs> um, the challenge of of doing something completely different even though you know I've been teaching for quite a while that it puts you completely back on the uh, uh, <laughs> at the starting block you know yeah, there's so many unknowns and so many I guess um, things you learn along the way um, which make it um, uh, it's quite scary, I guess, and um, you know, I've said it before, the whole control freak thing, you know, a lot of mm. us are in teaching because we are control freaks, we like to have <clears throat> a really good grasp on the knowledge that we're going to impart to these um, poor souls, and when suddenly we put the, the own ownership of that learning back on the students and we lose uh, some of that control, it can be really scary. But um, that's a good thing too, <laughs> and I think certainly these days we need to be aware that we don't know it all. And when we let go of some of that, <clears throat> that control, the kids can actually learn a lot more. There's a lot more freedom for the students to be relevant to where they're at. Um, another hurdle has been the group work. I wasn't as prepared as I could have been for um, facilitating effective group work. And mm. I think I want a lot more PD on that. And mm. Certainly being, making the mistakes I've made this year has helped me learn for the following year. Um, we didn't really realise the challenges of no, that, did we? No. We, we? We weren't sure. No. Mm. We, we weren't. And that um, has meant that as the year has gone on, things have fallen apart a little bit around the edges as far as the group, uh, the groups have gone. And um, I've put some much stricter boundaries in and, and teach them a lot of the skills required in term one and keep revisiting those as, as the year goes mm. on to make sure that 
they're not just chucked into groups, they're actually scaffolded through that mm. and supported through that whole structure. Of do you think groups. that's a good thing? You know, do you, you know, what's your impression on groups? Oh, I think it's absolutely vital. Kids need to know to work in groups. It's one of the key competencies, participating, contributing. Mm. And they need to be able to do that effectively, but we can't just assume they do it, and I think we've assumed it a bit too much. Um, so they need to be taught how to do that, but we've never been taught how to teach that, you know what I mean? We've been taught how to impart scientific knowledge, and we can do that. But teaching students how to work well as a group is, isn't something that we're naturally good at. So I need upskilling on that, and um, I think a lot of the teachers do. And it's, it's vital to teach them to do that, because in the real world that's what they have to do. And it's a skill that is really transferable between subjects too. Mm. Um, and another challenge has been the low ability students in the class who haven't coped well with the lack of structure. And um, yeah, again, that's a learning learning experience. I think some students just through their lack of self management skills need a lot more support than I've given them, and they've mm. probably floundered a lot more. They've still enjoyed science and they've still learned, but they haven't moved up the curriculum levels as much as I would have hoped partly because I've left them a little bit in the lurch. <laughs> mm. So um, so that's been a challenge, and, and just getting my head around how I will cope with that next year has been something that I'll need some time to step back and analyse and, and address. And um, Or maybe you know Pluto won't work for the really low ability kids. Mm. The, the huge issue has been the inability to read independently, mm. um, especially a, a page of, of notes on Google when they find information. If there's no pictures and if there's more than three sentences to the page, then they switch off. Um, and they very quickly then find a game to play because they've got the mm. access to it in front of them. So um, just managing that and mm. s supporting those students. And I think maybe um, in a school that's streamed, which we aren't, um, that issue would be largely removed. I think you can still do Pluto with low ability kids, but you do it slightly differently. Um, so having that range of abilities in the class is good and bad. That's, the Pluto's been great for the top two thirds of the class because they've been allowed the freedom to really um, just go for it and, and they've just through the open-ended nature of the inquiry process they've been allowed to just go and the sky's the limit and they've produced some fantastic work um, but almost at the expense of the lower ability kids who I can't help 100% of the time <laughs> and when I'm not there they need someone to hold their hand and I haven't been able to do that. Mm. Do you think that the, the, the students themselves, a lot, a lot of feedback that I've got in the last couple of weeks with these interviews, the kids feel really good about their, their friends, mm. that we didn't, I didn't realise how important it was, the whole peer mm. thing, mm. That, that they said that they actually grew closer mm. to these people. Some, mm. some groups have been together for the whole year, mm. Mm. and these girls have not known one another before this. Mm. And so they've really said that to, to us. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the students say, but yeah, half my groups have stayed the same the whole year through. Mm. And they're the ones that are producing fantastic work. Mm. And their group skills have really blossomed. And they'll be spending weekends together, sleeping over, working that, on their science projects. That's what projects. they've said. And yeah. no, that's fantastic. Yeah. I came and visited one of them for a completely different reason, because I know their parents. And here's the other two kids. It's like, hang on, <laughs> my, sc my school work is overlapping here. And they go, oh, we work on our science project, Miss, because we want to do this and this and this. So that was a real eye-opener, and, and I've never had that before. No. So that's very exciting. Mm. And like you say, the skills they're learning along the way are just mm. so valuable. Mm. Yeah. And they've said, you know, when you've interviewed one of my students earlier in the year, they said it's like a party when we come to science because we get to play, you know, to be with our friends and mm. um, it's just fun. Mm. So it's good. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, I think that some of the teachers have, uh, when I talk to group work, other teachers who are not part of the Pluto project have, have held very firmly to their views that we must put students in groups and they must be mixed ability groups. And as a result of Pluto, I would say that's wrong. <laughs> There's no way that Pluto would have worked if we'd forced the students to work with um, with kids they didn't want to work with. Yeah. Um, and like you said, them choosing their own groups has been absolutely vital. Mm. And they will naturally gravitate to kids who they get on with and who are working at the similar curriculum level to them. And that's been a good thing. I don't think you can force them to mix um, different levels if you're going to have the groups the same for the whole year, which I think has been vital. So, um, yeah, I wholeheartedly believe that we should allow the students to choose the groups. However, 
I probably next year will spend more time in that first term teaching them some of the group work skills and making them really aware of what's involved and mm -hmm. how they will be together for the whole year. Um, I did some of that, but probably not as much as I could mm -hmm. have or should have. There were issues along the along the way where you know so and so slept with somebody else's boyfriend and you know, major bullying issues. Um, so we have had a bit of shifting around of groups. There were times where the class couldn't function as a whole at all because of the bullying issues that were happening. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, some students have been stood down, and we've had some quite major issues. Um, and eventually, when they settle down, they settle down in a slightly different format, and some of the groups have had to reshuffle because of that. Um, but yeah, so the, some of the social stuff that happens around groups is, is beyond what I had the skills to deal with. Yeah. Um, and I think we need to know, or need need the, the courage to sit up, to, to stand up and, and ask for help from either the tutor teacher or the counsellors in the school and say, look, this is part of the project I'm involved in. Group work is really important, but there's social stuff happening here that A, you're not either, either not telling me about because of confidentiality issues, or um, I need some help and can you come in? And there's lots of support in the school. We just probably aren't that quick at putting our hand up. There's, you know, there's senior teacher support person or the um, behaviour, you know, the RTLBs who are paid to help out with this kind of stuff and I've probably been quicker at saying okay no you will work together and you will do this and without trying to resolve some of the issues because I felt it out of my depth it was more of a counselling type role that it became mm -hmm. because of the group work that it, you know it introduced counselling issues into the classroom I guess is what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. and that I wasn't that confident at dealing with but that are important to resolve and to work through so mm -hmm. yeah does that make sense? Mm, that's good. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs>